speakers and others. Several special guests today will have some comments about this project, and we'd like to begin with the founder and chairman of Chairman of Senior Rides of Lakes and SC to give you a brief overview of the project. I would like to ask that he introduce any members of his board of directors who might be in attendance today as well. Mr. Bill Dukes. Mr. Dukes. Thank you, Mayor. So yes, we do have some of our uh, volunteer uh, board members here, and I'd like to start with uh, Mr. Ted McGee from uh, the West Columbia area, uh, Pastor Wade Roof from uh, Mount Tabor, Amanda McSwine, who is our uh, secretary, and Amanda just recently graduated from the Arnold School and is now with um, United Way of the uh, Midlands, right? Steve Morris, who's with us from Richland County. Sandra Bryan. Sandra was uh, with me for eight years with Honor Flight, one of our top volunteers. And Pastor Kenneth Taylor with uh, Turner Memorial AME. Pastor Taylor, nice to have you. And Fred Deitch, who is going to be our interim director of operations. So, Thanks to all of our volunteers for being here today. One year ago, I met with the uh, Lieutenant Governor's Office of Aging to discuss a transportation service for seniors that then Lieutenant Governor McMaster wanted to provide to seniors in South Carolina. He had seen a program in Myrtle Beach that the office recommended I research. During the past year, we have worked closely with the neighbor to neighbor organization in Myrtle Beach to create a model that can be replicated and used by other communities in South Carolina. The Senior Rides Initiative recognizes that transportation needs for many senior citizens who want to continue to live independently have been underserved for too long. We all know that the need for transportation will only become more acute as our population continues to age. Many seniors in our region need safe, reliable transportation to medical appointments, the grocery store, pharmacies, and for other critical needs. Our goal is to provide that service with respect and dignity and lots of TLC. I am convinced that creative programs like Senior Rides that can be replicated and scalable may be one of the answers to help bridge the current gap between demand and available funding across the state. The faith community will serve an important role in support of the Senior Rides Initiative. We have reached out to the faith community to help recruit volunteer drivers for the program. Applicants will be screened and background checks will be conducted before a driver is certified. Our goal is to begin offering rides to seniors in the West Columbia community during the first quarter of 2018 and expanding the service to the Casey and Springdale communities sometime in mid-2018. It's an honor to be here. We're looking forward to launching this program and uh, happy holidays to all. Thank you, Mr. Dukes. Comment, next comments will be from Springdale Mayor Michael Bishop. Mr. Bishop. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Michael Bishop, Mayor of the Town of Springdale. I uh, just want to say what an honor it is to be a part of this, pro uh, supporting this project. It's an honor to be here with the, the governor and Senator Setzler and, and uh, House of Representative Micah Kasky. And you can tell by the esteemed group behind me, this is a, quite an important project. Uh, the city of West Columbia, Casey, and Springdale have always done a good job of working together uh, in whatever each other's needs are, be it, you know, a broke down garbage truck that we share or a resource that one has that one, another one doesn't to police backing each other up. And I think this will be a great opportunity for us to come together to support a project alongside the private sector. Uh, and I think we'll be able to do that job very well. <clears throat> In 2020, the town of Springdale census said we had about 2,600 people in our town. Of that 2,600, around 700 are 60 and older. The exact math put that at right at 30%. So one out of three homes almost is, is qualified to take advantage of this program. Uh, that, will show you just how important, how viable this opportunity and need is to our community. 
when we started code enforcement when I became mayor about four years ago, one of the, uh, our biggest directive for myself and council was to not use that code enforcement program to go after people, you know, as a hammer and take them to court and give tickets, but to identify why properties were being neglected. And without fail, every home that we found a legitimate need of, they had, didn't have the finances or couldn't physically take care of their property, without fail, we found volunteers to do that work. And I feel like this will be a project that volunteers will step forward on really quickly, that most people want to be part of something and don't always know how they can go about doing that. And I think this will be a great opportunity for people to come forward and support this project. I look forward to being, being a part of supporting it. It's an honor to be here today, and I look forward to seeing this program come into our community and throughout Lexington County. Thank so you, Mayor. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Next comments will be from uh, Senator, Resident Senator, Senator Nikki Sutsley. Senator Sutsley. Thank you, Mayor, and first, congratulations to Mr. Bill Dukes and his group and his board of senior rides and what they're doing. Uh, this is a tremendous, tremendous announcement here today. The senior rides, it recognizes the importance of the seniors of our three communities and our county and what they have contributed and what they can continue to contribute, but it also recognizes the importance and the value that our communities place on intergovernmental cooperation of three communities coming together, working with a private entity to provide services to people who really need those services. I think it's also just a continuation of the life of, of this community, of Casey West Columbia and Springdale, whether it be beautification, whether it be better schools, whether it be the river walk, whether it be developments on the river, it, it's just a continuation of a whole lifestyle that is being created within the Casey West Columbia Springdale community and again helps those people who need it the most and I want to congratulate not only Bill Dukes and his group but the three municipalities for what you're doing and joining here and thank the governor for being here. Thank you Senator. Our next comments will be from my resident uh, rep House of Representative member Mike, uh, Mike McCaskin. Representative McCaskin. Thank you Mr. Thank Mayor. You, thank I you sir. appreciate it. Uh, I just echo the, the comments of, of Mayor Bishop, uh, and Senator Setzler, and, and further extend my thanks to uh, Bill, you and your team that have made this possible. In the last year or so that I've had the honor and privilege of serving in the House of Representatives for the Casey, West Columbia, and Springdale areas, uh, it seems that all too often we find uh, challenges insurmountable and tasks too difficult to do anything. Uh, this program is an example of what can happen when the private sector and individuals who care about their community come together and work with uh, government. We're blessed in this area to have three wonderful mayors and Mayor Bobby Horton of West Columbia, Mayor Elise Parton of Casey, and Mayor Michael Bishop of Springdale who embrace the idea that our community can do better together. And so when folks uh, like those who've offered to help and work with uh, the, this program, it makes me just incredibly proud to serve this community. I thank all of you who were in the back and hiding from the cameras for your work, uh, our law enforcement officers, our public works folks, our fire uh, officials that are here, our city managers. Thank you guys so much for what you do. I'm so incredibly proud to see that West Columbia is on the cutting edge of programs that will, that will dim, deliver uh, a market improvement in the lives of people in our community. So thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity, uh, and thank you, Governor, for being here today. Yes, sir. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> and certainly, I have next remarks from our distinguished Governor, Henry McMaster. Thank Governor, you. Thank you, sir. Thank you thank for you, coming, you. sir. Y'all, this is a happy day. Y'all can probably remember, <clears throat> particularly if you're as old as, as uh, I am and uh, Nikki, you probably remember this when you had to borrow your mama's car in high school to go anywhere unless you were one of those who was able to find an old wreck somewhere to buy and drive around. But I can remember taking the car for two or three hours and my mama would just go crazy because she said she was abandoned, she was tied to the house, she couldn't go, felt like her freedom was gone and it was, uh, I always used to chuckle about it. But when you get a little bit older, you start to realize that if you don't have transportation, you, you do feel like you're isolated. And in many cases, our senior citizens are. And uh, as, as we'll remember, Senator McConnell, then Lieutenant Governor McConnell, used to talk about the gray tsunami that's coming. 
the baby boomers are all getting ready to retire. And when that happens, those, uh, the statistics will show that the, the population in South Carolina, the seniors in South Carolina population will just blossom. And I can tell you that we are in no way able right now to handle all of what's coming. That's why Senator McConnell called it a gray tsunami. But this program right here, this one right here, offers great hope and offers a solution. As was said, this is, this is a model for the rest of the state. We discovered, Steve Morris and I were working on this a few years ago when I was in the lieutenant governor's office trying to come up with good ideas and somebody said there's a ride program in Myrtle Beach. So we went down and looked at it and they had 260 volunteers. They went in an office supplied by the church next door. They had some people they were pay, uh, paying to put all the information into the computer so that volunteers could call and say, I want to volunteer. And seniors could call and say, I need a ride or wherever it is. And they ended up, Mr. Mayor, with 260 volunteers that had been trained and knew how to deal with the, the older, older people, get them in and out of the car, what their needs, what their expectations were. And people would call in from all over and they would be trained and they'd be the volunteers. And they'd just call in and say, I'm available from three o'clock, five o'clock on Wednesday. And they'd put them on the board. And you had all those people calling in and the board was full of drivers. And then you had the people would call in and say, I need a ride here, I need a ride there. And it just matched up just perfectly. And they were working that system. They'd gotten the idea from somewhere else. And, but they, it was working in, in vivid color there in Myrtle Beach. And so the, this community then picked up this idea. And Bill Dukes, uh, I can't thank you enough for, for leading this charge. Bill's done a lot of outstanding things for the state at, at no, no cost at all, no charge to the state. But this one right here is going to have far-reaching uh, applications because what you've done here is brought it into, brought it into the Midlands, brought it in within walking distance of those at the State House and other places, businesses that come in to the center of the, to Columbia and the State House to see what's going on. This is one of the best ideas there is, and it's not going to, the cost is minimal, and the, the cost to the riders, if there is any cost, that's minimal. There's one in Charleston where they charge about $10 or something for a ride. This is zero. The cost would be, I presume, there'd be some people being paid in an office or somewhere. But y'all, this is, this is the, of all the things that the seniors say they want, this is what they want. They want to be able to get up and go when they're ready to get up and go. And by allowing them to be able to get up and go to see their grandchildren, to go to the store, to go to the doctor, to go to the hair, hair uh, haircut, to do whatever it is, go to the library, or just ride around and look at the town. We've opened the door, we've, we've taken the pressure off of them, and there's no way to calculate the value and the impact that that's going to have on these seniors. By being able to get up and go, that will keep them getting up and going for a long time. That opens the door to their talents, opens the door to their hobbies, opens the door to their visits and all the things that they want to do, all at no cost. It's wonderful. And in, in state government or county government, any kind of city government, everybody knows we've got a, as far as money goes, we've got a six-foot bed and about a four-foot blanket. There's no way we can do it all. So the answer, the answer is right here, right in front of us, and that's this volunteer spirit with a new idea, collaboration, cooperation. And I, I promise you, I can guarantee that other cities, other community, communities are going to see this and they're going to say, we're going to do the same thing. So I congratulate everybody here. Th this, is, this is terrific, terrific. It's not another government program. It's the citizens doing something. It's being good neighbors. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to shine. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, sir. I would like to recognize other elected officials who are with us this evening. First of all, Mayor Elise Parton from Casey, who is currently also the president of the State Municipal Association. We have some city council members here, Trevor Bedell in the back, uh, Jimmy Brooks, uh, Mike Green. Did I miss anybody else who's here? But I do want to thank you for coming. And uh, we're going to wind it up. Uh, a critical phase of this project, as Governor just mentioned, is acquiring volunteers 
to assist senior writers. So if you or someone you know has some time on their hands, a good automobile, and is a good driver, of course, please ask them to call 803-582-8826. Again, that's 582-8826. Again, I want to thank Bill Dukes for recognizing the problem and doing something about it. His boundless energy and enthusiasm is to be admired in governor. We need more people like Bill Dukes in South Carolina. Again, thanks to all our guests, and a special thanks to our governor for taking time, which I know is a busy schedule to assist today, Governor. This conference is adjourned. Now we'll take some questions. When exactly is the next ship going to start? We're going to begin recruiting volunteer drivers uh, in this month in uh, January. We're going to focus on uh, January as our primary recruitment month. And uh, as I said earlier, the uh, faith community will play a good, you know, uh, role in this. Uh, I also uh, see that the um, service organizations can be a great resource. Uh, we found that to be the case in the Honor Flight program. So, and I want to I want to just just let you know what we uh, picture as success. Okay. The neighbor to neighbor program that we refer to in Myrtle Beach, you know, has been going for eight years or so, seven years or eight years. And um, they started out pretty slow. This has been a process that started a little over a year ago. And as I told someone at lunch today, it's kind of like a fine wine. You know, it just takes time and it ages. And then you end up sipping and you've just got a wonderful, you know, um, a product. This has been a year. And some people would say, why does it take that long? But I can tell you some very, very exciting things have happened in that year's period of time. First of all, we were able to get our 501C. And not only that, but we had a volunteer that uh, had, 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 uh, was working with us that uh, had been involved in another organization in, to support seniors. And they had to dissolve because they could not get traction. And they said that if we were to get our 501C, that the funds that they had in their account, they would be very happy to transfer. And as it turns out, they transferred $56,000. So that gets us, you know, going there. The other thing that happened is Ted McGee, you know, came forward and offered us office space. And that's an expense that we will not have at this point. Uh, we've also got uh, a telephone. And, uh, and I will tell you that, um, this is one that I question whether I would ask for forgiveness or permission. But uh, it happens to be, and you may not want to publish this, okay, because, uh, but it happens to be the same telephone number that we had for Honor Flight. And uh, it was provided by Verizon. But I called. I took the approach of being up front, and I called Verizon. And I kind of got the message that just don't make me go through all this bureaucratic stuff. Um, is it working? And I said, yes. They said, okay. So, <laughs> so that's uh, where we are. So we've been blessed. Um, and, um, and so we're going to uh, strive to find 20 qualified, solid volunteers uh, that can drive in January. And then we will open the doors for clients. And we believe that in 2018, if we've got 20 to 40, 50 volunteers, and we're serving 30, 40 clients, that that is, that is success. We have proven, you know, that, uh, that, that the need is there and that we can, you know, satisfy and take care of those seniors the right way, the right way. And I will use one other thing that I learned at Honor Flight, and I told this many, many times, we did not have to advertise a lot or solicit a lot for our money. But we took 20 plus flight, flights, $60,000 each, which was over $1.2 million that we were able to raise. And it came from small donations. And I firmly believe that the reason it was successful is because we were doing the right thing for the right reasons. And when that happens, it connects the heart to the pocketbook. The, we're going to basically have that working through the faith organization. 
we're going to have the churches involved. Yes, that's going to be the start. That's going to be the start, and then the word of mouth will spread from there. Mr. Duke, is there, uh, you, you mentioned that the um, drivers were going to have background checks. Is there going to be any kind of checks on automobiles? Uh, well, I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> it makes sense to do that, doesn't it? Yes. Well, I will, I will uh, say that uh, what the governor said, he, he really got excited and, and embellished uh, the opportunities that might be available there. But we're going to focus originally to, to start with on medical needs, the doctor's appointments, the pharmacies, and essential needs, the grocers and so forth. But I will again, if I may, share with you what happened with Honor Flight. All of the guardians that took these World War II veterans to Washington, D.C., ended up becoming buddies, and they went to movies together. They went and did all other kind of things. So I believe that there are going to just be a tremendous number of opportunities and friendships and relationships that grow out of it. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you.